Welcome to St. Laveau's World Cinema. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about foreign movies. And um, today, because I've been reading about Joan of Arc the last two days, I decided that our movies are going to be set in France and set uh, one set back in the medieval days and one set in the present day. So before we get into the movie, I wanted to say that I read Nancy Goldstone's excellent The Maid and the Queen, The Secret History of Joan of Arc. And it talks about how Yolanda of Aragon, who was the mother-in-law of Charles VII, the king that Joan fought for, played extreme, uh, an extremely important um, uh, role in the diplomatic process that set France on to its path that it had before um, uh, his father, Charles VI, ruled. So French history sometimes can be a little bit convoluted, but the fact that the French revere their heroines and their heroes and their queens is something near and dear to my heart. So that's one of the reasons why our first movie today, um, oh, and by the way, The Maid and the Queen, Please uh, check out Nancy Goldstone's excellent book. Uh, it gets better as it goes on. And the last quarter of the book, I was just laughing. The writer it has an incredible wit and uh, what a great read. So please check it out if you want to know some of the history of the Hundred Years' War. Now, um, we're going to fast forward a little bit in time to France about um, 50 years later, where Catherine de Medici uh, has married Henry II, a most enigmatic king. He unfortunately died of a jousting accident. This set the French nobility and the aristocracy on a path of um, much unhappiness. I think that if he had lived, things would have been easier for his progeny who survived him. As it is, we're going to explore the beautiful Queen Margot which was directed by, um, I think, Pierre Chenot. And it stars Isabel Anjani as Margaret Vella, Danielle Etelier, et, et uh, Jean-Hugh Anglade, Barbette Schroeder, Vincent Perez, Verna Lisi, um, uh, Dominique Blanc, Pascal Gregory, Miguel Bose, Ezea Argento, Jean-Claude Bailey, and Jules Rassam. Please forgive me. My French is seventh grade French. It's not very good. So the first time I saw this movie, I could not even believe what I was looking at. I think I've talked about this movie on another show before. It is actually a slice of history which involves uh, Catherine de Medici and one of her sons plotting the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, which um, uh, murdered the Huguenot faction in France. And the Huguenots were Protestants at the time. The new religion was an up and coming one. And there were kings, who, kings, dukes, and counts who supported it and kings, dukes, and counts who did not. So um, there's much unrest in the kingdom. And to bring the, the Catholic and the Protestant together, uh, Catherine, uh, Regent of France, decided to marry her daughter Margot to uh, the King of Navarre, Henri Bourbon, who later became Henry IV. Now, this all might sound a little bit confusing, but basically there was a religious civil war there were three different kings named Henri. Uh, one was a duke, one was Catherine's son, and one was Henri of Navarre, and they all fought for supremacy of France. Now, when we look at this movie, it's based on the novel by Alexandre Dumont. I have not read the book. It's a horridly romantic tale. Catherine is used as a pawn to bring the factions together, but 
she has a will of her own. Um, I want to say here that in America, I find we don't really make movies um, as graphic as this. For instance, when Ron Howard and Brian Grazer tried to make the movie The Alamo, Touchstone Pictures, uh, I think a subsidiary of Disney, I'm not sure though, uh, didn't want them to produce it the way that they had the vision of the movie. They were like, look, it's the Alamo. There's blood, there's gore, there's brown people, it's horrible, it's a mess, people are dying everywhere. And Touchstone said, no, it's a PG movie. And Ron Howard and Brian Grazer said, this is not PG material. Neither is Saint ba the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. So when you see um, the pikes come out and people getting piked, and there's a defense uh, explanation. Defense, uh, it's called throwing someone out the window. It's all horribly, horribly graphic, but what great filmmaking. The music's awesome. I neglected to, pardon me, write down the uh, name of the composer there. Uh, this movie won a few awards. It was Best Director for Patrice Charot, and Isabel Adjani uh, won Best Actress. Uh, I believe Jean Hu Anglade won a Best Supporting Actor uh, Caesar Award, and so did Verna Lisi, who played Catherine de Medici. And there was also a Best Cinematography Award and a Costume Design Award. Okay, so um, Margot being a pawn and not in love with her husband. From the opening scenes, we know that something horrid is going to happen. If we don't know our history, we do not know what it is. As the movie progresses, both um, Margot and her husband there, Henri of Navarre, circumnavigate the treacherous waters of medieval France. Please check it out, okay? You're going to love it. And all the guys are handsome. One critic wrote that the casting made the royalty back then look like a bunch of aging rock stars. The actors are all rather terribly sexy. Um, if you look at the pictures of what these guys really looked like back in the day, especially Charles IX, they all look kind of runty looking, pardon. I mean, they did, you know, but bad genetics. Uh, Catherine's parents, I think, were cousins and Catherine was distant cousins with her husband. So. Uh, the royalty were all marrying each other, so that's why they didn't look, uh, you know, too appetizing. But uh, the guys who star in the movie look fantastic, and so do the gals. Okay, so the next movie we're going to go to is Agnes, Agnes Varda's Wrenching the Vagabond, saw, starring uh, Sandra Bonaire. Now, we've all had thought, maybe not all of us, but we've all thought about wandering the road, traveling like a hobo. Uh, Preston Sturgis's wonderful, that movie Joe McCrea and Veronica Lake, uh, Sullivan's Travels, okay, shows the pitfalls of that as well as Paul Mooney's I Was a Prisoner on a Chain Gang, okay. So um, to be a vagabond, you know, you think freedom and the romance of it, but uh, there is that movie, Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine, and Lee Marvin was head of the hobos, and Ernest Borgnine was head of the conductors, and the hobos and the conductors were always fighting. Being a hobo, it's not a dream life, okay? So when you're younger, some of us think, oh, to travel the road and be free, yada, yada, yada. A friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends, a couple years ago said, I'd love to be a vagabond. She is one of the most responsible people I know. And I said to her, we're going to sit down one day and watch Vagabond. Now, I read the review for this movie when it first came out, saw it a couple years later. Child, I did not know where to look. Okay, like I did not know where to look. So um, let me look at my notes here. The movie illustrates the pearls of the road. The beginning is showed, oh, pardon me, the end is shown at the beginning a la Sunset Boulevard, Billy Wilder's movie. I like that technique. 
The movie's told in flashbacks. And as we watch our vagabond, her name is Mona, uh, you would think, oh, happy-go-lucky, traveling down the road. She curses at a truck driver. She's rude. She's rude to almost every single, every single person that she meets. She kind of is a taker. Um, the pearls of the road have hardened her. Uh, she meets all types of people in the um, time frame that the movie is set. A nice bourgeois lady, and uh, there's one other character. Oh, a Tunisian, Tunisian, Tunisian migrant worker, both of whom are the only two people who seem to have good heart. Almost everyone else, the, all the characters seem a bit cynical to uh, Mona comes across. All right, so Varda actually um, plays the interviewer slash narrator who is recounting uh, Mona's life uh, in those few days that we see her on the road, which is a very nice touch. Usually when someone's narrating a movie, they put a different voiceover. Uh, anyone who's playing the movie usually isn't doing the voiceover. Uh, I don't think that was true of Citizen Kane. I sort of thought maybe Justin Cotton or Orson was narrating it. I can't remember. At any rate, it's a nice touch. Um, please watch this movie. Uh, your 16-year-old, don't threaten them with military school if they're act up. Show them this movie. Show them and illustrate to them that we all need one another. We're all in it together and we're all related. And if you choose to turn your back on family and society, not in a way that's productive for you and productive for everyone, but in a way that demeans you and hurts everyone else, that road is a long and hard one. So I love this movie. I love the darkness of it. Um, it's actually, their parts are very scary. But Mona is one of the most scariest characters of them all, and she's a vagabond. Uh, and there's a reason why this young lady is traveling the road. Tearjerker sad, but um, you're going to find that she's not all, uh, all that uh, sympathetic character. All right, so I think that that's it for me today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. You've been watching St. Laveau's World Cinema. Um, this uh, pardon me, this uh, episode's a little on the short side. Next uh, episode, I think we're going to explore the um, Nigerian film industry and a little bit of Hong Kong filmmaking. Until I see you again, darlings, ciao, Bela, and uh, check out some movies with some subtitles. They won't hurt you. Ciao.